Well, welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and it's spring semester 2013. This week, what I'm going to do is teach you how to use a module that comes with ArcGIS called ArcPy. And that allows you access to all the geoprocessing tools that are available in ArcGIS. So if you go to the geoprocessing window, and then select Python, that will pull up the Python window. And that's where we can input our Python commands and also any ArcPy command, which is basically all the geoprocessing tools that come with ArcGIS. Sometimes you'll open up this Python window, and if you right mouse click and go to help placement, it's in the bottom of this panel but we don't see it right now. So what you need to do is go to the bottom of this window and then drag that panel up and then you'll see the help placement is down here. So anytime we type in a command, so for example, let's see arcpy, so we could type in arcpy and then dot and then you'll see basically all the objects that are applicable to arcpy. And one of the first things we wanna do is basically specify the workspace that we're going to um, input from and output to. So that would be arcpy.env. And there should be a property workspace in this list. So here's our workspace. So we could just double click on it and we'd have workspace. And then equals. And then the easiest way to set your workspace is basically to use the catalog and drag from the catalog into your Python window. So from my catalog window, what I'll do is grab this feature class, container, which is a personal geodatabase. So our workspace could be a geodatabase, or if we're dealing with shapefiles or geotiffs, it could be a folder. So basically what I want to do is drag that into my Python window. And then basically it's R, which basically means ignore the special backslash characters in Python. And that will be my workspace. Okay, so we could see what is our current workspace. So that would just be print arcpy.env workspace. So that's our workspace. Okay, so when working in the Python window in ArcGIS, if you hit the up arrow key, it recalls your previous commands. And if you hit the down arrow key, then you can kind of go from previous command to next command. Okay, there's two other environments that you'll typically set. And the first one would be whether you want to overwrite output. So that would be analogous to if you go to geoprocessing and then options, right here, overwrite the output of geoprocessing options. You may have that checked on or checked off. You could do the same thing in ArcPy. And then the other thing is, do you want to add results from the output of any geoprocessing operation? Do you want it added to the display? So that Typically, as a user, you check on or check off. So we'll do the same thing in the ArcPy window, and then that will set it for ArcPy Python scripting. So that would be ArcPy.env. And then the first thing we'll do is add output to map. So if that's equal to true, then Anytime we execute a tool that creates output, it will also be in our table of contents in ArcMap. And then if I hit the up arrow key, I can recall a command. And the second thing was dot and then overwrite output. So that would be, do we want to overwrite output? And we'll say yes, true. So those are three typical environments that you set in your Python script is where's the input and output going to come from and go to? And then do you want to add the output from geoprocessing tools to your ArcMap table of contents? And then if the output already exists, do you want to have permission to overwrite that output? Okay, what we're going to do is we'll make a layer 
from this feature class, and these are all the fires in Alaska from 1940 to 2012. So to do that, if we go to our Python window, it would simply be arcpy dot make, and then there's some tools for making. So make feature layer would make a feature layer. So we're going to use that tool make feature layer. So I'll just double click on it and then left paren. And then down here in the help window, it tells you what it's expecting. So the first thing it is expecting is our input feature and then what the output layer should be. And then anything enclosed in curly braces is optional. So the where clause is optional. The workspace is optional. The field information is optional. So typically what we'll do is we'll make a variable for our input feature class before we run this tool. So that will just be a Python variable. So I'll say in feature class equals, and then I'll go to my catalog and then just drag this into my Python window. So that's going to be my in feature class. And I really didn't have to include the path because our workspace environment workspace is already set to that geodatabase, but just dragging it from the catalog, it includes the path. So now I've got this in feature class in a variable that's a Python variable. So now let's make a layer in our table of contents. So arcpy.make, and then we double click on the tool we want to use. And the first thing is the in feature. So that's going to be this variable. So I'll go control C to copy, control V to paste and then comma, and then whatever we want to call our output layer. So my output layer, I'll call it a string AK fires. So then it makes a layer, and if we look at our table of contents, we've got a layer called AK fires. Okay, let's say we want to make a layer representing the fires from last summer. So we could press the up arrow key. Down here under the usage, make feature layer, in feature, out layer, where clause. So if we scroll down, it says where clause is a structured query expression. The syntax for that expression differs depending upon the data source. So if you're querying a SDE geodatabase, a shapefile, or a coverage, your field is enclosed in double quotes. And we're querying a personal geodatabase. So querying a personal geodatabase, you enclose your field in brackets. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a little variable that will contain our query. So I'll just call it my query, and that's going to be equal to a string. So I would say take this field that's in my feature class layer, and I'm going to enclose it in square brackets because it's coming from a personal geodatabase. And then does that equal the value 2012? So all that did was it created a Python string variable. So if I say, what's the type of that variable? It is a string variable. And what's inside it? So that's what's inside my string variable. So now if I press the up arrow key to get back to make feature layer, it would be we've got our input features specified, we've got our output layer, so we'll call this um, 2012, and then the where clause. So the where clause will be my query. And then we just press enter or return to execute this um, geoprocessing tool. So if we look at our table of contents, now we've got a layer which is the fires from 2012. And if we look at it under properties, the source of this layer is a feature class from a personal geodatabase. And this is the name of the feature class. And this is the path and the name of the database. And then if we go to the definition query tab, it has the exact same definition query that we specified in our Python script. So burn year equals 2012. So that's where it got it from this string variable 
my query, which contained that definition query. Okay, so how many fire polygons are in this layer? Well, we'll make a variable called count 2012 fires. And then if we use arcpy dot get count, so it's in the management toolbox, so just get count, and then left paren, and basically it says in rows, and then it's smart enough to list all the layers in our table contents that have applicable feature attribute tables. So we'll just double click on this layer. So give us how many rows or how many polygons are in that layer. Okay, if we look at the type, you would think it would return an integer value for count, but it actually returns an arc object result. So we can't directly look at it or use it as an integer. What we could do is convert it to an integer. So to convert it to an integer, what we could do is say, well, let's take that, that arc object result and we'll convert it to a string. So now if we look at it, it's a string and we could convert that to an integer if we needed to use it, that numeric value for some reason then int to convert it to an integer. So now we've got an integer value of 55 fires that occurred in 2012 in Alaska. Okay, so whenever you execute a geoprocessing tool, there are messages that are generated. So if we go back into ArcPy and say print ArcPy dot get messages. So get messages. So there's a severity code. So if we leave this blank, the default value is zero, which means return all the messages. If we only want warning messages, you would put a value of one. So warning message might be output already exists, for example, if we had a geoprocessing tool that was creating output. And then a value of two would specify error messages so the geoprocessing tool did not execute successfully. So here, give us all the messages regardless of whether it's just a message, a warning message, or an error message. So that's basically what it gives us. The last time it executed some geoprocessing tool, what happened? And then if you want to, you could print this out line by line using a property of the message count. So let's just say message count equals arcpy dot get message count. So then we could just do this in a loop. So for i in the range going from zero to message count. So we're going to print just some text message number comma i. And then print arcpy dot get message. So in the past we use get messages and it gets all the messages. Get message gets the ith message. So line by line. And then we'll just have a print statement. So basically our Message zero was what geoprocessing tool was being executed. The next message was when that geoprocessing tool started. And then the next message was any sort of message output from the geoprocessing tool. And then the last message was what was the time and the elapsed time for executing that geoprocessing tool. Okay, so let's do an example of a geoprocessing tool. We're going to buffer each um, wildfire polygon by 10 kilometers. So what we'll do is we'll make a variable for our output buffer. And we'll just call this buffer fires from 2012. So then we could just go arcpy.buffer. And you'll see this tool, the buffer underscore arc, would be buffering arc info coverages. And then buffer underscore analysis is from the analysis toolbox. So that's basically for buffering shapefiles or geodatabase feature classes. So that's what we want. And then left paren 
and it shows us the usage of this. So the first thing it wants is what's the input. So here our input, it lists all the feature classes that are in the table of contents that you could buffer. So we'll choose this feature class. And then the second thing is what's the output. So our output will be this variable out buffer. And then comma. And then the third thing is what's the distance that you want to buffer each polygon by. So that we'll put in as a string. And we'll just say buffer each wildfire polygon by 10. And then our units. So in this case, our units will be kilometers. And then just enter. So that buffered every polygon by 10 kilometers. OK, so your assignment for our next video session is to run this type of buffering and print to your log file the start and the stop time of the buffering geoprocessing. And I'll go over the solution to that in our next video session.